my name is Brandon Reich. I'm the video surveillance practice leader here at Pivot3. We're going to talk today about the uh, solutions that we have for video surveillance. Now, as you probably know, uh, Pivot3 is a leader in hyperconverged infrastructure solutions. We have products that fit general purpose data center applications, mostly based on our Acuity product line. And then we have products that are designed specifically for a video surveillance application and workload, uh, our product called VStack. So I'm going to spend today talking a little bit about uh, the video surveillance industry, what's happening in the industry, what the implications are, particularly for server and storage infrastructure, and then how our VStack surveillance solutions help solve your problems uh, a little bit differently and certainly very uniquely from anything else uh, in the market today. So video surveillance is uh, really at the heritage of Pivot3. It's one of the early applications, the early use cases that we solved for with our uh, hyperconverged infrastructure solutions. Uh, today, we're now recognized as the architectural leader in video surveillance server and storage infrastructure. And we specifically design our solutions for a couple of things, primarily based for um, critical uh, enterprise type video surveillance uh, implementations and designed to uh, prevent system downtime and data loss and to maximize performance and scalability. And as we go through this, we'll talk a little bit about why those things are important and what kind of things you need to consider as you're planning your infrastructure solutions. As you probably know, uh, video surveillance technology is in tremendous demand these days and there's lots of different reasons for that. There have been lots of very high profile incidents that have occurred. We all know the threat landscape overall is changing very much. And organizations are looking for ways to respond to and to mitigate these risks in a more efficient and more effective manner. So they're deploying lots of new types of technologies. Well, all these new video technologies are leading to a couple of things. One, higher and higher amounts of data, just massive amounts of data that's being generated by cameras and has to be captured and stored and protected somewhere. And secondly is technologies to utilize that data. So how do we take all that data in and turn it into something actionable? Whether it be security uh, intelligence or security information or perhaps business continuity and business intelligence types of applications. And so what this means and the implication to us is that we need to think about infrastructure that can eliminate some real challenges, particularly with system downtime and data loss that just maybe three, four, or five years ago was a commonly accepted thing in the world of video surveillance and today uh, uh, really cannot be accepted or not be tolerated at all. So we need to think about infrastructure solutions that can deliver the performance, the resiliency, and the scalability that is required to meet the needs of modern video surveillance uh, deployments. So why are these things important? Well, first of all, performance. We talk, when we talk about performance, what we mean is a storage system's ability to take in or to ingest massive amounts of data without any kind of loss. So most video surveillance applications generate huge amounts of data, and that data can quickly overcome a traditional storage system's ability to take or to capture all that data effectively. When that happens, we something occurs called frame loss. And frame loss is a really bad thing in video. It can lead to a couple of problems. One can be degradation of the quality of the image or potentially even loss of entire segments of video. And it's a real challenge for most storage systems to do that because video surveillance is a very write intensive, uh, sequential streaming uh, I.O. type of, of application different than uh, most data center uh, solutions are, are used to. Secondly is resiliency. How do we protect our systems against system downtime and data loss? The tools that we typically use for system res or for resiliency applications like data replication, snapshots, backups, um, even RAID technology nowadays. Most of these tools that are very common in the IT world either don't work for video surveillance or they can be really prohibitively expensive. Uh, we, we can't back up video surveillance data, for example. It just doesn't work. We really can't replicate it easily. These are very large systems that, that can be very cost prohibitive to do. And then third is scalability. The, the one thing I always say about 
video surveillance systems is that they never get smaller and they almost always get bigger. And there's a common misperception out there that as video surveillance systems get larger, that we simply have to scale our storage capacity to accommodate them. And that's not true. We actually need to be able to scale our storage, our compute, as well as our bandwidth capacity, and typically do so linearly together. So we have to have systems that scale well and that do so in a very non-disruptive and a very simple manner. So if we look at what our options are today for, uh, conven or for conventional storage solutions and video surveillance really kind of revolves around two architectures. One is a traditional uh, physical server architecture uh, that the industry knows as a network video recorder. It's a standard server with a piece of software installed on it, typically deployed as an appliance. These NVRs or network video recorders are have been around for a number of years and were really designed to replace an older uh, DVR or even a VCR type of technology from, from uh, many years ago. And they work well for small systems, but they don't scale very well. It can lead to some real challenges as you get to larger and more complex systems. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum is IT-based or enterprise-type storage, like SANS and NAS types of solutions. And these, these storage solutions can solve a lot of the problems of NVRs for larger video systems. However, uh, SANS and NAS primarily were never designed to handle a video surveillance application and a video surveillance workload. And as a result, they tend to perform very poorly for video surveillance, which can lead to problems with frame loss, like I was mentioning before, that can really cause some, some challenges in video. And, and of course, they're also very expensive and very complex to manage. So a SAN or a NAS is not really an ideal architecture for a, for a video surveillance, particularly a large-scale critical video surveillance application. So what do we do at Pivot3? We have really taken sort of the best of both worlds. Uh, we've taken the, the low price point and certainly the low level of complexity and commodity hardware of an NVR type solution. And now we've brought in or we've replicated the features and the functionality and the value that large scale SAN and virtualized server infrastructure uh, solutions can bring. And we combine them together into one common hyper-converged infrastructure platform. So the way that our system is generally architected and deployed, we start with standard off-the-shelf x86 server hardware, in many cases the same hardware that the NVRs use. We deploy them in clusters, and then we have our software that runs on it. Our software is called VStack. It stands for Virtual Storage and Compute, and it's really the secret sauce that makes uh, a lot of the uh, systems work and brings the value that we bring. So VStack does a couple of things. Number one, it actually uh, serves as the storage controller inside of the uh, inside of the cluster and it aggregates all of the storage resources from all of the boxes together into one common pool of storage that we call a virtual SAM. That virtual SAM is then accessible by every single virtual machine and hence every single camera regardless of which physical machine uh, that camera is associated with. And then secondly, VStack actually controls how the data is moved from the virtual machine or the video management software down to the physical storage layer. And because of that, we're able to optimize our system specifically for a video surveillance type of workload. So the benefits that we bring are a couple of things. Number one, we will achieve and sustain the highest levels of video ingest performance without ever dropping frames. And we'll sustain that level of performance even in what we call a degraded mode or when hardware starts to fail. A secondly, is we'll deliver extreme levels of resiliency. So six nines of system uptime and data availability. Data availability. That means that we eliminate downtime, we eliminate data loss, we eliminate those things that we talked earlier about that the end users can no longer tolerate and cannot afford in their video surveillance deployments. And then thirdly, we'll be highly scalable. We allow you to start very small and then scale your storage, your compute, and your bandwidth capacity over time as your needs and your budgets change. And the great thing is we can deliver all this really enterprise class value without the cost and complexity typically associated 
with enterprise class infrastructure. So we've designed the complexity of deploying and managing these types of solutions out. Now I'm not gonna go into the details of how we do all that, but you see a list here of all of our cool features and some of the functionality that we have that enables us to deliver all of this value. I will talk about one thing real quickly though, and it's really a fundamental underpinning of our technology. It's something called scalar erasure coding. Now, to explain what that is, most people are generally familiar with RAID technology in storage. The way RAID works is that as data comes in, let's say from a camera in this case, it actually gets striped across a number of disks inside of a group so that if one of those disks happens to fail, we can recover that data. With erasure coding, we don't stripe data just across disks. We actually stripe it across disks and across boxes or across appliances inside of a cluster. And the way that we have deployed erasure coding gives us a number of benefits above and beyond what RAID can deliver. Number one, it helps us deliver that lossless ingest performance by using every single hard drive or every single spindle for every single write transaction. It ensures that we can protect data against the loss of up to five drives simultaneously or the loss of an entire box, an entire node plus two additional drives somewhere else in the cluster. If that happens, we'll ensure that your data is not only protected, but is always instantly accessible. And it gives us the ability to provide all this value with what is really deemed industry-leading storage efficiency. So at scale, we'll, we will provide up to 94% storage efficiency, which means 94% of the storage raw storage that you buy is fully usable and fully accessible. And of course, it gives us the, the ability to scale this system out to effectively infinite size and scale. So while it's not the only piece of technology that we have, scalar erasure coding is a critical piece of our software-defined storage and our hyper-converged infrastructure solution that enables us to work so well in a video surveillance environment. So we are deployed now in about 53 countries around the world in virtually every type of end user industry. Uh, what you see on the screen right now is just a, a high level snapshot of some of our larger deployments around the world. And there's a real mix here of some very large deployments like a uh, Chicago Metra or an MBTA that is a centralized storage solution, meaning all the video comes back to one or a small number of, of locations and is stored in one place, as well as large distributed uh, scenarios like a, a WMATA, Washington Metro Transit Authority, that has our, our uh, solutions deployed in about 130 of their, their train stations all around Washington. Uh, every type of end user, virtually every geography here, the one common theme across all of these customers and really all of our uh, end users everywhere is video is considered critical. And what I mean by that is there's no tolerance for system downtime, there's no tolerance for data loss, and generally there's some challenges around performance and scalability. I'll take just a, a quick look here at, at a couple of examples. This first one is the Chicago Metra uh, Transit Authority, and you can read the numbers here on the screen. This is a, a fairly large system, about eight and a half petabytes worth of storage. They have us deployed across five different sites. Um, it's been in service now for a little over five years now. But the two things I want to point, point out here is that in that entire five years, they have never lost a byte of data, never lost a frame, never lost a single byte of data, whether it's from a hardware failure or anything else. And this entire infrastructure, 310 nodes, eight and a half petabytes of storage, is managed by one person. He estimates it's roughly 20% of his time, and he has no background in IT whatsoever. In fact, he came out of the law enforcement world and, uh, and wasn't necessarily technically uh, astute or adept at uh, large-scale IT infrastructure. So it's a very simple system uh, to manage. And, and certainly, this is an example of one that's one of the largest transit authorities in the world. On the other end of the spectrum, FedEx Ground has us deployed in about 800, I think now it is, uh, warehouse and distribution facilities in the U.S. 
And these are relatively small deployments, anywhere from 30 to 100 cameras per facility typically. And while we started out uh, doing video surveillance storage for FedEx, since that time they've realized they're able to take our infrastructure and put other types of applications on it. So now they're running their warehouse management systems. They're, I think they have email servers running and a number of other systems that run in each one of their warehouses that, by the way, don't have any IT, local IT resource. And it's all running on the back of the same uh, video surveillance infrastructure that's there. Uh, we are, as I mentioned, um, deployed in virtually all over the world and with virtually all of the major video management software providers out there. Uh, we have uh, certainly uh, tested and certified with all of the big ones, uh, but we've, we have proven deployments with uh, virtually all of them as well. And I just want to mention a little bit about where do we win, where do we fit. Well, I told you we're, we, work in, we have worked in pretty much every single vertical market or vertical industry out there. We do have some strengths out there, and you see the ones on the screen around transportation, casino gaming, um, education, particularly higher education, federal government, healthcare, and then increasingly the law enforcement vertical has been has been a big one for us just because of the the new uh, video solutions being deployed for body worn cameras and for uh, smart cities and, and uh, safe city type of, of deployments. But generally, we look for uh, a couple of qualifiers for new opportunities. One is uh, are there or what are the implications for system downtime or data loss? If there are no implications, meaning if it's just not a big deal, if their systems goes down, then it may not always be the best fit for us. But in most cases, there are some kind of major implications there. Secondly, we look for big or growing systems. And then thirdly, of course, we look for the involvement of the IT department at the end user level. We find that if IT is involved in these deployments and not just a security department, that they tend to understand and, val and value uh, the things that we do on the hyperconverged side um, uh, pretty extensively. So we like to see that IT involvement in our deployments. And so the, the last thing I'll talk about here is how do you sell it? You know, how do we sell uh, video surveillance? What are the key benefits? What are the key um, uh, things that we provide to an end user? What is the real value that we deliver? Well, first of all, we talk about eliminating system downtime and data loss. To an end user, what that means is we help them reduce risks and liabilities that they might incur as a result of technology failures. System downtime and data loss can be really bad for an end user. Secondly, we talked about eliminating frame loss and ensuring that all data is always captured and always protected. This means that we're improving the overall effectiveness of their security system their surveillance system. We're preventing image quality degradation. We're ensuring that video is always working all the time. If we don't do that, then their systems are not very effective and they can be deemed perhaps uh, not a good use of, of their investment. And then last, our, through our unlimited scalability and our very simplified management and quite frankly, our, our commodity hardware that we use, we help them reduce cost and complexity. Okay, we do not require big, major, advanced IT skills to manage our systems on a day-in, day-out basis. And so we've, we've taken these steps to really, truly drive uh, real value to the end user level with our video surveillance deployments, and we appreciate your, your consideration of Pivot 3 in this opportunity.